Hello, all my Kano's drinkers, drinkers of the new wine. Welcome, welcome. Kano's means new. For all of you that are new here, God is making all things new. And he had a plan for our salvation from identifying with the big lie of separation to believing the one true gospel, that we are in union with Christ already. The work is done because the word of God is a person. And that person is Jesus. He has done it. It is finished. So welcome to the Inclusive Gospel. We're about to welcome our guest today, who is Matt Nichols. Matt likes to talk about our perfection in Christ, uh, how we are seen perfect through the eyes of the Father, that God is not condemning us, that he's not mad at us, that he's pleased with us. In fact, let me quote Francois de Troy. The Father's mind is made up about us. He is well pleased, says Francois de Toy, who wrote the Mira Bible, a Greek paraphrased translation. So our salvation doesn't hang by a thread from a deranged schizophrenic God who loves us one day, but the next is trying to force us to do something we are not equipped for. He does not set us up for disasters. He makes a way for all to receive and therefore should never should experience the bliss of our union with Christ. His mercy never comes to an end. We can be assured that in the end, love wins. So let's celebrate Jesus's victory over sin and death. Remember that we were buried with him and that we rise with him too. Whee! Hallelujah. Can I get an amen? So as we wait for our friend to arrive, I just wanted to share with you how to recognize three important pieces that are so vital to the message of the gospel okay and this can often be missed in religion you know in, in in various church denominations so listen carefully breathe it in and go to holy spirit and ask if this is makes sense to you if this resonates with you number one God's unfailing love for all of his creation, right? So his unfailing love for all means all. It doesn't mean some. It doesn't mean only if, only if you believe, only if you say this prayer. It's all. Okay, we're going to go into that. Number two, Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. This is the key to our salvation. The sacrifice that God made for us through his son on the cross. God was in Christ reconciling the whole world to himself. But this can only happen because of our mystical union with him. We were, Paul says, we were dead with him in the grave. We were, we went to Hades with him. We went there and he preached the gospel and we rose again with him. And then we ascended into heaven with him and we're seated there in heavenly places. As we speak right now, we're there in heavenly places. <sighs> Number three, the most commonly confused, the blessed trinity. There is no separation for those in Christ. And who's in Christ? You are, you are, you are, you are. Everyone is in Christ because we are a new creation. This is a new creation. We are a new creation in Christ. Once we, uh, even once we know and have this awareness of our union with Christ, this is when our relationship can really blossom because now we can commune with him and know um, our savior, know the loving Christ who is our advocate, who speaks for uh, with us in everything we do, who protects us, who loves us unconditionally. So with that being said, here's Matt. Okay, so we're, there, we're having some technical difficulties, so I want to read to you something before he comes on. This is something that he posted today. He, this guy is amazing. He posts almost every day uh, inspiring thoughts and words that, um, that the Father is giving him, just words of wisdom, words of knowledge, prophetic stuff, and just uh, apologetic stuff, really, just... Uh, unraveling the true gospel of who God is. So this is what he wrote about an hour ago. Um, he wrote it on the Y guy, he wrote it on Kanos, and he wrote it on um, 
I think Iowa calling. So those are all groups you should definitely be a part of if you are not already. Okay. Something you can share with someone today. You can follow along with me and see from the screen. The fact you won't ask Jesus to reveal himself to you might be proof you're scared he will. You maybe just have some religion in your mind that paints him in a bad light, but the fury, the fiery, I'm sorry, the fiery, intoxicating, tangible, hilarious, happy love substance of his very person is who you were created by him to enjoy and live effortlessly through. He will clearly show you that he hates religion and loves you and everyone with the most crazy, amazing, everlasting love. Which is so true, right? He loves you so much that his, his heart is just yearning for you to be engaging with him and, and just believing in him and believing with him that you are good that you yes we we've all sinned we've all fall short of the glory of god we've all made mistakes in our past but he because of his work on the cross he sees it as finished he sees you he sees the final product the sanctifying grace that he's filled you with it's already done it's already finished um sure it's a process in your own life to grow and and learn more about God and dive deeper and to scripture and to um, work on old ha habits and hangups and behaviors that maybe you used to do before you knew Christ, but he's doing that work within us. And although, you know, sanctification is a real thing, it's not something that you have to strive for. It's very dangerous when we get into that striving mode because that creates more distance away from it's away from god um, when we're striving to do things in our own effort trying to please god instead of just being one with god and when you're one with god you know what God wants you to say and what God wants you to do in your life. Um, do we do it perfectly every second? No, we make mistakes, but he sees us as perfect. So that's the important thing to, to grasp. Um, now, as we wait for our guests, let me move to the next piece, which is the laughter of God. I want to share with you. Okay. And I got to pay attention, make sure. Oh, let me stop share. There we go. The laughter of God. Okay. And I'm going to read from page uh, 59. So if you have it, you can read along. It's so good. Okay. This is in the chapter called No Enchantment. Why is it that people who profess God as the only power wish to hear of other forces, which they seem to think are actually more powerful than God? I'm not going to mention any denominations, but, you know, Pentecost. <clears throat> no. <laughs> oh, you got to understand. I got to say, sense of humor about all religions. So no one will, left, will be left unteased. What is the insane curiosity of looking ahead, trying to see if something good is going to happen, but the hypnotism of the human mind and the failure to awaken to the glorious now of life? Anyone who has awakened to the Christ consciousness is not looking for good that is to come. He is revealing in the glorious present of the now, and he does not doubt the future. He is not wondering if things will be taken care of. He knows that as long as he stays at the point of the now of God, he will not need to prepare to destroy the devil, right? So, oh, here he is. Let's welcome that. <laughs> welcome welcome i was just reading from the laughter of god have you sweet. read that yes sweet so, yeah so good how are you doing good i'm good i'm good I'm, thanks I'm for having up. me drinking drinking up the yeah. gospel and um yeah <laughs> we, 
yeah i just i just was reading about i think i think you you would like this like um you're talking about like religions and 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 demonic things like in pentecostalism where you hear about you know fighting the dark forces you know and um this book just articulates it so well that um why do why do we focus on all that when we have the full authority in christ and we have everything we need. So we really don't need to be fighting against the enemy because he's already defeated. So so why do we do it? And what what makes us feel that we have to do that? Even myself, and I'm not even Pentecostal, and I find myself, oh, is this the, is this the enemy? Is this that? And then I'm thinking too much and not drinking enough. So I don't know if you want to share on that just because that's kind of where I'm at right now. And yeah in my wow. talk it was just yeah just <laughs> i know i know i probably caught might have caught you off guard there but um but i also no. shared some stuff that you wrote as well no 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 i like how well, like, let's start you want to start yeah with that? yeah yeah i like how uh you're like going off the off off the cuff and and you're trying to yeah totally you, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to <laughs> just flow with the holy i mean not trying you just are flowing with the holy ghost but yeah right yeah that's really good what you're thinking about um i've been thinking about that a lot too mm -hmm. uh a lot lately because you know i have a background of of uh like really shady dark spiritual things and you know where i would actually summon evil spirits into myself and i, I didn't know that they were evil spirits yeah. at, at the time but um you know i went through that stuff of, of you know having to pray that stuff out of me and but th there was a time when when jesus showed me the resurrection mm -hmm. and like in in that day i like i knew he was real in such a way that i i just totally needed oh and and you're making me cry it's like whoa yeah. <laughs> well, i know yeah. i'm sorry that's a powerful uh, testimony uh but yeah I'm, I'm canadian so i say sorry a lot even when i probably shouldn't say sorry but <laughs> Oh, don't I feel bad. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, I know. Yeah, I know you're feeling love, but thank you, Jesus. But yeah, Jesus showed me Himself. Like He showed me the resurrection, and that 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 I I I rose with Him and two thousand years ago, and it was like it was like oh my God, that's what I needed to get totally delivered, like from all my mental, emotional, spiritual torment that I brought on myself and that the world brought on to me but uh you know one more thing i'll say before before you can say something too is just that yeah there i've been learning that 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 we are a whole person that that there's not some person off in heaven somewhere and and then us you know like a perfect version of us but but no we we are that perfect version of ourselves we you know mm -hmm. but there, there still is a very real fall there's still very real sickness there's still very real demons and and the depending on what level someone is at in 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 their walk which you know i would like it to be everyone could understand the finished work but 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 there's a lot of people aren't who aren't and some of them need to cast a demon out some of them need to 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 tell a sickness to leave you know so um but i would rather just rest and I don't know how all the things work because even a finished work believer like myself, like sometimes I need to pray for a sickness to leave. And I think that could be the same somehow sometimes for spirits, but I'm not hyper focusing on them. You mm -hmm. know, I'm focusing on Jesus and he might give me discerning of spirit sometime and say, tell that thing to go, but I'm not trying to be obsessed with it. And maybe in the past I was a little bit, but yeah. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. That's good. Yeah, I think I think we've all been there and done that in some way or another. Some of us have been more religious than others. Some of us come from New Age. I mean, I yeah. I started in um, a congregational church growing up, and so the Pentecostal and all that used to freak me out. I had no clue of any of that. <laughs> Um, so so I just I just grew up with with kind of knowing God, but not really. I just sort of went through the motions of like going through um, confirmation and everything like that. And I remember um, even when we had to write our, we had to write like a little essay on, on God. And I remember I, I believed every single thing except the Virgin Mary. Cause I, I was so stubborn back then. Like I was such a, 
I would, at school, I was the same way. Like, let me just find something that, that doesn't make sense. That part doesn't make sense. Everything else makes, makes sense. But you know, that part doesn't make sense. <laughs> for, whatever <laughs> reason, for whatever reason, God had hardened my heart pretty hard there, you know? And so they were actually thinking of not confirming me because of that, but they let me go through because they felt my heart was right. And that I, I still love God. Um, so yeah. I was able to pass <laughs> on to the next step of religion, but, um, but yeah, then I went to college and I got mixed up into a lot of new age. And, and like you said, like, I kind of did some stuff that I shouldn't have done like Ouija board. And, uh, I tell you, like, I'm to this day, I'm like terrified of Ouija boards. Like I won't let my daughter go near them or yeah. anything. So, yeah. um, yeah, call me religious on that, but that, you know, I definitely, uh, no, no, that's wise. That's not religious. It's wise, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I, I really had an experience that was totally real and demonic. So, so uh, yeah, there's some danger. It's not to say like everything's safe, but I could wear a hat like this and not be like freaked out. Because I mean, I used yeah. to hear people if, if I was if I was reading a Harry Potter book, I was I was messing with the dark arts, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But yeah. now I can. Whoa. What was it? I had a dream last night about Harry Potter. So <laughs> there you go. Yeah. God was showing me like there's some good, really good things about it, you know? Yeah, there's good in everything. And he, he's and redeeming it. He's redeeming it. Because it's the not, devil is not, a, he, he doesn't have anything original. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Wow. So, so right. like, yeah, the devil just twisted it all, you know? But tell us about the dream. Yeah. Go for yeah. It. Sorry for interrupting you, but what, no, no problem. <laughs> what, what, what were you about to say? I don't even know. I'm just, I'm yeah. just saying like I, when I first discovered Jesus, I had an experience similar to you. I was, uh, well, I was in um, Buddhism and, and, and with all sorts of stuff. And um, because I was trying to get rid of an addiction, I was very addicted. I had problem with, with um, opiates, pills, uh, drink, drinking, um, weed, just anything I could get my hands on pretty much in college. Uh, I went through PTSD I had an experience that was very traumatic with some men and that were no good. And uh, ever since then, you know, I still battle with, with PTSD, but God has been saving me from that. And, and, and I say, you know, saving instead of save, like, I know I'm saved, but at the same yeah. time in my life, if I'm completely honest with myself, there's things that'll still come up and trigger me. And yeah, you know, same. like, like same, I yeah. can't, I can't go places alone and be completely confident. You know, I get nervous to be alone as a woman, you know, with the guy, I just get freaked out. <laughs> so, but God knows, yeah. God knows. And, and there's yeah. wisdom in that too. Like you said, well, yeah. You know, things and and I want to go like, if you don't mind. Yeah. Just about that subjective objective thing, you know, how we are objectively that real person. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, and I'll, I'll go back to what I said earlier kind of build on that because because we are like that real person but there's still things that are off and that still is somehow the real person mm -hmm. like we actually can get hurt and things you know but mm -hmm. god knows yes one version of us that it and 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 uh it can change but but he preserves it like it can change in time but he preserves it in his eternal reality Mm. And when we pray, we want that eternal reality about us to manifest. So it's 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 just like uh, you know, uh, something lining back up to what it was. He's untwisting the wires, but those wires are still the wires, and he sees that the wires are actually eternally untwisted in his reality. But 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 he wants to walk us out. You know what William Paul Young said? Yeah. When uh, the way of your being matches the the truth of your being, then then you know that's what wholeness is. So so there's many things like contemplation whatever that uh reading the bible mm -hmm. fellowship worship that that can tune us into that reality um but it's actually christ through those things that is tuning us in you know so so like in matt spink's book he he you know high on god <laughs> yeah. it's, it's awesome book he yeah. he talks about how um there's there's all these things that our real self loves to do and if we're not doing those things, then it's it's kind of hard to stay high, you know, because yeah. like, why go and sin? Why and go and just fellowship constantly with people who don't 
necessarily believe the finished work. Yeah. Um, because that's eventually going to kind of rub off on you. I, I don't know exactly what he meant fully on that. So don't quote me, but, but that's kind of how I see it. Oh, you know, yeah. Like, he talks about that in his book. Yeah. 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 Like, like it can rub off on us. Another one like, yeah. N- not, not that it's like actually changing us, but it's, it's just like, like, like we want the best for us, you know, and, and that's going to keep us more high. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, like, I guess why I bring that the up. Best for us, right? He wants the best. God. Yeah, 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 and and yeah, exactly. And 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 whatever that looks like, and and because I've heard some people say that like relationships will heal you, you know. Um, and you know, it's ultimately God's relationship that heals us the most. Like when I said G- I saw Jesus, and like I saw myself, like identified in Him. Like I saw him stepped out of the tomb and I, and I just, I like in this open vision and it was like fire everywhere. Yeah. It, it, it was this one day of my cousin's wedding and, and this priest, this, this Catholic priest prayed for me that day. And this just fireball of Jesus, it shot through me. And I just had the faith of God that Jesus is real. Yeah. And just the whole day was just all fire. And I was just totally free of everything. And, Amen. and yes. I saw Jesus in this vision and right in front of me, it was so clear, bright as day. And I knew that it was 2000 years ago and that I rose with him because it was like, I was looking at the one person, Jesus and the one person, (laughs) 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 the the one person, Jesus, I was looking at him and I, it was like, I was looking at myself too, but I was looking at him. It was like, he knew me so much that I was like standing in him. And, and it was just like this relationship of like, of me being in him. I can't really put it to words, but it was yeah. just, it just totally Hard. freed me. And I think in fellowship and in prayer and contemplation, reading all these things, we're tuning into that reality and, and we're, you know, and there's relationship involved in all that. So wherever there's trauma or demons or whatever in our life, ultimately, you know, they're getting flushed out of us through that re- real relationship because why wow. do we get hurt? We yeah. get hurt in bad relationships and we're designed for a good relationship. So when there's a bad relationship that happens to you, it kind of twists you a little bit because, yeah. you know, it just it, it hurts and, and it actually does hurt the real us. But God heals us. So one more thing I'll say is that God's been teaching me that that we shouldn't identify as 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 um, a victim, but broken victim. This yeah. yeah, like 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 in the sense that that's like your objective, true reality, like. But, you know, like, 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 I'm not going to go around and be like, 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 say I'm feeling bad or say I felt bad for a whole year. You know, we could get caught up in the cycle of constantly not focus on, on uh, the negative as much. Um, And ultimately, it's really already finished. So it's just faith comes by hearing that finished work reality and he confirms it to your heart, you know, and, you know the truth will set you free and it's already true about you. <laughs> Amen. <Woo>. Amen. <laughs> I don't even know anything. Jesus, he's just sharing his knowing with me. You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah, I can't, I can't claim any of this for myself. It's all him. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. That that's how I felt when I had that experience with him. It was, I was going to say it's, it's similar to what you had. I didn't see, have an open vision of him, but I felt the tangible presence of him and I knew he was real. He really did die. And the same thing like that co co buried, we were co buried, co um, crucified with him, co buried. I felt it all. And um, it was so powerful. I was just in my kitchen. It was just a normal day too. It wasn't like I was in a funk or anything. It was just. What would you say kind of you, you, you cut out there. Oh, I was in my kitchen okay. um, when it happened and I wasn't in a funk or anything. I wasn't having a bad day. It was just a normal day. And uh, this bright, literally a bright light came in, you know, just the sunlight. But that was at the moment where I fell to my knees and I was like, what's happening? And I had this vision, but not, not seeing Jesus, but feeling him, feeling the tangible presence of Christ and knowing he's real. Cause for weeks before that, I was going to a church and I was asking for a prayer a lot because I'm like, I don't know if I believe like these people believe. I was like worried that I wasn't believing enough or hard enough or (laughs) didn't have enough faith. And he just gave me that faith, you know, it was all him. It wasn't me. 
And that was just so refreshing to experience that yeah. his presence in that way. And, and then from then on, um, you know, it was good for, I was very high for a few weeks, just totally on fire and <laughs> people and just acting like a crazy woman, just all over the place, Yeah, but, there you go. but in a good way. And, I remember like feeling convicted for little things too. Like I'm going to put the shopping cart back where it belongs instead of leaving it. Little things would just come up and I'd be like, I'm going to do this. But then um, I got sidetracked by religion. I started going to different churches to try to find out where I fit. And I I was hearing all different mixes and uh, started thinking about the works that you have to do to keep your salvation. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so you know all this mess so for a couple of years i was like a little messed up with religion and then the third the the second real transformation was when i went to john crowder's event in new york it was called um the big drink <laughs> and i went <laughs> i went there and yeah i i got totally drunk in the spirit and i've never I've never experienced that before. So like I said, I wasn't Pentecostal or anything. I wasn't used to that kind of experience. <laughs> so I, and then that was a kind of reality wake up call that, you know, I'm, this is the real gospel. This is real. Cause I've not just because I'm feeling good, but because I knew, cause again, the visions came back all of a sudden I'm, I'm dancing with Jesus. Yeah. I'm seeing him in the spirit. I'm seeing him healing people. I'm, I'm seeing him through you, you know, through the people that are there. And yeah. it was just, oh, so intense. Yeah, yeah. And you're being your real self. Like when you started putting yeah. the shopping cart back. Yeah. It's just, you, you're, you're probably like that most of your life, you know? Yeah. And you probably knew you're, you're probably like, why was I even doing those things? Yeah. Or no. So you're, you're probably like, okay, hey, like, I don't need to do these things. I don't need to do like, like, like you knew it was better, but you didn't have the right programming in your mind, you know? Right, right. That's where the gospel comes and sets us free and says, no, you're good. You're not what the world tells you, you know? Yeah. You don't have to be like these people who don't put their shopping cart back. You can put your shopping cart back because you're actually a good little girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, right. And his presence makes us so much like better. Not not his presence makes us every person good, but it's just it it, it helps to have your mind lined up you know because that's what true theology does like what um crowder talks about it it more it more it's not saying okay i know everything about god but it's like okay actually i don't know everything about god Mm -hmm. but i know that he's good i know he's not bad Mm -hmm. and i know he's everywhere and he saved me single-handedly because he's fully god and fully man jesus christ and it's just like there you go there you go <laughs> like you don't need right. to do anything it's all he, good you he's in everyone him. that was a new one too he's in everyone yeah he's, he's, fully, he's fully there you don't yeah. have to say a um, prayer a specific prayer you just he's there <laughs> yeah and yeah i want to just say this too <laughs> I, I i i've been hunting the past uh week or so like week for deer hunting and so if anyone's wondering why, why I, I might look a little bit greasy today i was gonna <laughs> Is you know, I haven't been showering much the past few days. I've really been hunting. I've really been trying to be like a, a wild man. So you're looking at her right now. Look at that. Look at that. There you go. Nice. <laughs> but I'm still a good boy. Don't judge me by how I look. I look like a greasy caveman, but that's fine. Ah, <laughs> uh, I don't see it. <laughs> we judge no one by the flesh, but that's right. That's right. We judge no one by the according to their outward appearance, but you know, according to Christ in them. So mm-hmm yeah i'm just joking but i mean no seriously though (laughs) so yeah and you you were saying um earlier about the religion and stuff you said you had like a bible verse too that you wanted to share it um yeah yeah because you're asking like like yeah Yeah. what came to me what came Um, to mind i'm just curious (laughs) yeah um sorry i I was thinking about something (laughs) i was thinking about something first I was That's like, should okay. I say this or should I not? This other thing. Um, yeah, whatever. Because, no, <laughs> because some people are probably really wondering, like, like, why is he always, like, staring off in the distance? It's because it, it, <laughs> it helps me focus. Like, No, take your time. I, I have ADHD, so I know that for me, I need to space out a little bit. Um, and it helps me gather my thoughts. Otherwise, um, I can stutter. I have issues, like, 
I've learned a lot about myself through the last couple of years. So I have total patience for that kind of stuff. I, yeah. I don't like you, you know, like people think you have to act a certain way or do a certain thing or, or be a yeah. certain way, you know, Holy spirit acts different in everyone. You know, it's not like, yeah. that's the thing. A lot of people with the high on God stuff, like they think I, I have friends here that are like, well, I don't, I don't want to be high. That seems weird. You know, that seems you guys are, they're just faking it or, you know, they're just, uh, they're really high on something else or whatever. Yeah. It's like, you know, everyone's going to have their own experience with Holy Spirit. And, yeah. and some people might be experiencing that high on God just by sitting here like this with a smile on their face. That's it. You know, you know, so you don't have to be like rolling on the ground laughing. You could be yeah. That's what John Crowder says, right? You might, the guy rolling on the ground laughing is worried that the guy who's sitting there is judging him. And the guy that's sitting there is thinking the guy, that he should be rolling on the ground laughing. Yeah. He, he yeah. said that before too. So don't judge. I'm not judging. Yeah. God. And, and we are, um, um, yeah. Oh yeah. I, I can, I, I can look into the distance. I don't have to look at the camera all the time <laughs> yeah, yeah. because I, you know, sometimes I, I do get kind of caught up in some of that stuff, but no, God, just God's helping me, you know, just like he's helping you, but you know, it, it's good to admit that stuff and not say that we're, you know, whatever we're going through, it's good. It's good to admit it to one another and, yeah. you know, so that we can be healed, but I don't know if I need healing. Maybe, maybe God's like, Matthew, you need to be healed so you can look at the camera more. You can look in people's <laughs> eyes more, not be looking around. <laughs> no, no, it's all no, good. I, I, I'm just actually kind of joking. I'm just like, I just don't want, I just, you know, I guess the kind of religion kind of made me think like, you got to look a certain way. You got to, you got to make sure you're, you're like looking professional and stuff. But actually last night, God really helped me with something because, um, he, he wanted me to go record some of my testimony about some bad things I went through in my past. Okay. It, it's good. It's, it's, it's going to help a lot of people with, um, who are involved in shamanism and new age and, and, uh, but right before I started recording it, you know, I, I got, I got kind of nervous. I'm like, Oh my God, you know, cause I kept trying to record and I'm like, I'm not being how I want to be. <laughs> like and then he just told me like it's really clear he's just like be as real as you can be yeah i was like oh my god wow like i don't i don't need to do anything <laughs> but i just need to be myself yeah like be real i don't need to be like whoa man whoa what? like yeah yeah, yeah. Never, because maybe I need to be like, whoa, man, because that's my real self in the moment. But sometimes maybe I can be like that and it's really not. Yeah. But I, I'm getting better at it. I'm getting better. It's <laughs> good. I'm getting I'm getting better at being my whoa, man self, you know, or whoa, my, or, like or just you. like my, eh? Eh? <laughs> you are Canadian, eh? <laughs> yeah, I am. Yeah. Hey, yeah, I am. <laughs> you say a a lot, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We had that Bible verse. Um, yeah. So back to the Bible verse. <laughs> yeah. It, it, yeah. Bible yeah. bumpers out there. <laughs> yeah. It, it, yeah. I love you, by the way. And so thanks for having me on. Love you. I love you a lot. You're, you're, you're a beautiful woman of God. Bless your family. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you're, you're, you're adorable. You're, you're, you're adorable. You're, you're, you're amazing. I love you so much, sister. Thank you. Um, Oh, no, it's great. You're very, yeah. you're very inspiring. <laughs> I love your posts. Thank you. Love, oh yeah. Maybe. Yeah. The, the, the verse I heard, I heard him say milk and honey. Oh, okay. But, and, and I was thinking that some people might need to hear, um, well, well, I want to ask you first, what, 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 what did you want to do with, with, with the Bible verses? Like, well, I, the Bible verse that I was thinking that kept coming into my mind was as in Adam, all have died as in Christ, all will be made alive. And just that simple verse has been very intoxicating for me lately. Um, yeah. so wow. that like my sin, like we were talking about before with religion and striving, cause striving is a sin actually. And, um, yeah. <laughs> isn't that funny That's though? Your sins. Are you striving today? Minnesota? tell me. <laughs> I will forgive I'm telling you. you. Like people don't realize that, you know, when you're living like that, you're you're actually 
you because you're because you're um because you're 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 grasping on to your yourself your your ego to try to please god and instead of just living in 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 union with him so so even striving can be a sin um yeah so so i was thinking about that and just different uh things that come up in my own life um where you know i might have a feeling about something or someone in my life and I'll be like oh gosh like start thinking negative thoughts about that person like you know whether it's at work or at home or whatever and like oh there's something wrong with that person I need to fix them you know and right there it's like I need to fix them no it's like Jesus is gonna fix them it's not me so so right there I was like convicting myself the other day of something like that and um I felt so free afterwards knowing that as an atom all have died. So I've already died to that. I've died to my sin and in Christ I'm alive. We're alive and free. I totally need to hear that. That's beautiful. So good. So I don't know. That's just what came to my mind. So I was like, Ooh, let me ask Matt what Bible verse he's. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Well, I said, yeah, the milk and honey one. And I, I don't know exactly word for word how it goes. And I don't need to pull a Bible up right now because I might get distracted and all that going verse by verse. But um, and, and, and it's cool. Um, I think it was this Sondar guy talks about in John Crowder's book, Ecstasy of Loving God. You know, the guy who, who they think is still alive under the cave. Yeah, or like yeah. He's in some cave somewhere. He's probably like 400 or something. Apparently yeah. how he read the Bible, he, he like read a, a bunch of it really fast you know like a whole chapter or something and then whatever verse stuck out to him he he would go back and really you know chew on that Mm -hmm. and so i think out of the verse out of that whole passage about the milk and honey i guess right now that's the verse that's sticking out to me um and another verse that's coming out to me too in that is just well, I don't even know how it says it actually, but, but it basically it's saying that like, I guess God, I did, I think he promised to him that you'll inherit the land of milk, the honey, or maybe it was Moses. It was one of them, <laughs> but whatever. Yeah, God, but, God promised. Yeah. Yeah. But that's sticking out to me. And, and then I started thinking about that more and God starting to show me more things about it. And it's just simply just, you know, the gospel and, and how people can, you know, and, and how they weren't inheriting the promised land that they're walking in the valley of unbelief for 40 years in the wilderness. Right. And he said, it's yours. Just go walk and take it. So it's yours. Your healing's yours. Everything you need is yours. Just go walk and take it. And how do you do that? Like, like you know, how do you walk in the spirit? You just realize that you're already in the spirit. You just start walking. <laughs> so it's like, you're already in the promised land. Just start drinking. Right. Start eating the milk and honey. And, and, it's, and how do you do that? You, you just, you just, you, you can't do it. Jesus does it for you. He drinks it for you. And it's just like, whoa surrender stop trying to drink stop trying to do this just realize you're in me and and i've been realizing that my thoughts and and faith my emotions they're they're only really good and pure and lovely and acceptable and you know when it's coming from that single eye that he gives me that i'm in union with him Mm -hmm. you know (laughs) yeah Yeah. it's just like it's just a byproduct instead of a thought and an emotion and a prayer and faith and fasting or whatever to try to get more of him. Right. It's actually the other way around. It springs out of that. Sometimes I fast because I'm just so lost in his presence. I don't even feel like eating. Sometimes, you know, I have so much faith, you know, because he wants to heal people through me. And so it's yeah. just like, I can rest in the land of milk and honey and all right. his, all of his promises become yes and amen to me. And it's just like, Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, that's so true though. Wow. I mean that that's that's the truth of the like the fasting and the the well the works, faith without works is dead, but those works come from rest and our union with him. Yeah. I've had that experience too, where like I'm yeah. just so in the glory, like hours goes by, I'm not eating. It's like a whole day I didn't eat. It's not because I'm trying to not eat or I'm trying to, it's just you don't even think about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like so lost in him and in presence. And, mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey. It's a good diet. <laughs> hey, so, amen. 
to. But um, Justin Paul Abraham is someone that I've been listening to a little bit. And Mike Parsons, have you listened to them a little bit? I, don't know I listen you... to Justin Abraham, but Mike Parsons, I don't. Just what you were just talking about, um, how to experience yeah. the supernatural, but, you know, without um, striving. It, I just think this goes really good with what we're saying. So let's yeah. just hear the, let's just hear this. Hear me out on this. Uh, did, did you already have this planned? Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. Wow, look at this flow. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is going to be good. You'll see. <laughs> Uh, you want to get out there. Okay. So and the guy at the Mike bottom is a specific asking, teaching, Matt, or asking uh, a question. A guide to starting off. How do you? So the so the guy at the bottom is um asking you know how to start um you know supernaturally communicating with God like living in the supernatural and this is yeah. what they um I think you you start engaging the Father without an agenda and you just let him like what you were saying. You beyond when you're ready yeah. you know god's obviously placed the desire in your heart and that desire will begin to birth and manifest that in your life um so i would encourage you not to pursue a particular thing but pursue him and if you continue to pursue the mm -hmm. relationship with him as a father then he is going to <laughs> i take it your baby's sitting right now are you blake I, I got my boy. Sorry, I'm going to move into the other room. I apologize. No, no, it's, it's all good. We've, we we know what it's like. It's all it's all part of it. And this is the thing. This it's just life, mate. <laughs> Pause it now. <laughs> yeah, you're in yeah, the closet. Closet. There you go. You're in, you're in the gateway right now. You're in the. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I am. Um, I, that that answers the question. Oh, did I interrupt you? I apologize. That's a very tricky thing. What Mike's mentioned, just letting go of agenda. That is really challenging how do you do that mike how do you let go of agenda with god because we've um, all got agendas haven't we yeah I, I i basically god god helped me let go of the agenda because basically he, jesus the father and the spirit hugged me for about six months back in 2011 and they just wouldn't let me go wouldn't say anything other than hugging me so i got a cardiogenosis <laughs> the heart <laughs> more revelation of the father's heart than ever before and i started off with well, what are we going to do today where are we going today what do you want to show me today and after a week of a hug i just stopped asking questions and just embraced the hug and yeah that really broke my sort of desire to set the agenda or find out what the father's agenda is yeah. even i just want to be with them so wow. just being in his yeah. presence being face yeah. to face he sort of surrounds me with his intentions and then that is what shapes where i go and what i do out of the father's heart jesus only did what he saw the father doing mm -hmm. and for yeah. me that is the key you know just being yeah. not doing that's and good mike everything flows out of that the wow. side for me the same way blake is that i used to just let god's love come on me lots and cry and groan and like I had like a season where it was just like love on me God your love love on me and he loved on me for a long time and his presence started to rest on me and that's when he took me for my first encounter in the stars I didn't know he was going to do it so I think like if you just keep enveloping yourself in God's love like you have been all is well and all shall be well I'm in you you're in me let that whack get you more that love and then he might take you out to the person next door to love on them or up the street, or he might take you in yeah. to the nation. Do you know what I mean? Create space. Yeah. But I think if you've got a desire to see the heavens, he will show you it. Because what I've learned is if you delight yourself in the Lord, so you're having fun with God, he will give you the desires of your heart. So as you delight yeah. and you enjoy and you get whacked, so and you're enjoying your love yeah. relationship, desire starts to create reality wow you know and it opens up does that answer the question for you blake it does and i, I guess i it it forms like one minor question i hope for time's sake it's okay i don't yeah. think it's too deep. Sure. um when you you said something to me that really like it stretched the fabric of consciousness for me because you said like hey whether i'm having like an outer body experience or i'm painting or i'm getting a coffee I allow that to all be one, um, one world. So I don't right. have to have the experience and that freedom for me. Cause I see you guys like, 
you know, I honor you guys. And I think it's easy to, to put people under a starlight. And I just like, if that never happens, I'm totally content with that. But then it like posed a question for me today that like, you, you also said something like that you feel like God is raising up a company of people who will not settle for not having everything that heaven has for him. So I think that's the duality where it's like, it's okay yeah, for that, me. Yeah, but, you're, 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 you're tackling a very deep thing there. It's like we have to have the bliss of union and enjoy in everyday yeah. life, but somehow have the balance of I'm reaching for something. Like Paul said, there's a heavenward yeah. call. And I think we can't reach for it until we start to get a good synergy with the Lord. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I we do, have that's to start to get creamy, whacked. I'm loving life. I know I'm going to see it all. But with an en- there's an energy then. It's not like a striving energy. It's like a, I don't know, it's a different kind of energy yeah. where you yes. reach for something from love. Would you agree, yeah. Mike? Yeah. In that place of oneness, you just are rather than you're doing something. That's good. It's like being. Yeah. And we, we, we've been sort of used to trying to do and do and do to get something. Yeah, to get right, somewhere. right. But when you discover you already are uh, and you already sort of are mm-hmm. in that state of being, it's a state of conscious awareness of just being constantly in the Father's presence and in the light. Uh, and yeah. that That's really it. just enables you just to live in a state of joy, a state yeah. of that sort of blissful state of just being. That you're loved now, Blake, you know, you're loved in your closet. You are loved. You're in the love closet. <laughs> He's clothed you. You were naked when you came on the call. Now you're clothed, you know. <laughs> okay. So it goes on and it's just, oh, great. I just wanted to share some of that. I mean, we can talk about that for a while. <laughs> Get to that was great. I love that. Yeah. So what do you think? I, I mean, my takeaway Beautiful. was, well, I, I mean, I didn't even listen that far until I was with you, Matt. I just listened to like a, a minute of it. And I thought yeah. this is going to be great. We're going to, I got to share this with Matt. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, just, I could relate to the guy's questions. Um, I could relate to the busyness in the guy's life. It sounds like he has a kid in the background. I have a kid here right now, you know, she's downstairs. Um, so, but in the chaos, God is there. And what does it look like? It's different for everyone. Like we were saying before, he's, yeah. he's in the midst, he's there. And we're just a part of it. We're just in it. Once we are just in the oneness of it all, how beautiful that synchronicity is. Yeah. When we can just kind of just swim in it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what all life is. Yeah. Uh, communion with the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Yeah. And if we're missing it, it's because we just don't know that. Mm. Um, or I should, I shouldn't, I'll put it another way. We already know that. Mm-hmm. But if we're kind of distracted from that, it might be because, you know, we are, our mind or something or just something in life, we are more captivated by that than Jesus, you know? Yeah. True. We're, we're, we're like, when we really fall in love with Jesus, like we just can't get enough. And we're just like, I don't care about anything else except for you and all things. Mm. And and then you're really truly caring for all things, you know, because you see that all things are like what they really are, you know, beloved of God. And you're not trying to take these things in, in order for you to get some type of satisfaction from them because you can't get satisfaction from things unless you're enjoying Jesus with those things, you know? So, and, 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 and to enjoy these things, to see them as God truly sees them um, is to really love that thing. I, I believe, you know, because as you see something as it really truly is from God's perspective, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's all like, like the world is manifesting, uh, are manifesting as God wants it to be. You know, he's restoring the creation through us, through our awareness of what, how he sees it. And then there's a lot of people out there who are trying, who are, who are thinking, okay, we need to imagine these things. We need to try to imagine all these, like, uh, yeah, for example, like things we need, imagine you're going to get a car and just let it sink oh, into your heart. Right. And then when you see yeah. it, you're going to yeah. get it. But how, no, how about, how about just like the guy in that video is saying, what does God want to give you? I'm not saying your desires are bad, but but it can turn into witchcraft if if yeah. you're trying to 
do it instead of just let God show you and he'll give it to you. You know? <laughs> yeah. That was the law of attraction, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. There's some teachers out there who are passing it off as Christianity who are teaching yeah. that stuff. You know, it's crazy using biblical language and right. There's, there's little subtleties, you know, and it's hard to catch, but when you see the gospel, you know, I don't go around trying to catch subtleties anymore because I, I really couldn't that well. But once I've seen the gospel, just Jesus Christ, you you can see what these subtleties are, you know? Mm-hmm. And and like, again, a false teaching, you're like, whoa, this part is like kind of off, a little bit off. It seems a little bit striving. It seems a little bit new agey or law of attraction or religion, what, whatever it is that you're seeing, because... Jesus doesn't want us to lift the finger. He wants us to rest in him and just enjoy him doing all things for us. Mm. So really, if if it doesn't look like that, if there's a but somewhere, if there's something that you got to drum up, you got to make happen, then that's, you're, you're probably hearing something that's not true, you know? It's a good, simple way to say it. Yeah. 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 So yeah, we want, we want to pray. I, uh, I wanted yeah. to share one thing with you from, um, you know, um, Dave, yeah, sure. David Bentley Hart. David Bentley yeah. Hart. Okay. Yeah, and, yeah, he's sweet. He's sweet. And then this guy, Hope for All, Ten Reasons God Love Prevails by um, Jerry Bochmi. I don't know if I could say his last name right, but. Oh, I, I feel I, I feel glory on that book right there. Like, I should get it. Yeah. Is, is, is it pretty good? Yeah, it's um. So he's a Christian universalist, which even people in our camp sometimes like cringe at the word universalist. Yeah, but um, because you can see it wrong. You can see it wrong. You know. Yeah, you could see it wrong, and um, you could see it right, and and yeah. God, you know, wants everyone to be saved, and His will shall not be thwarted. And there's so yeah. much scripture. I mean, people oh, say yeah. like, to me, "Oh, you're cherry picking the Bible," but um, I don't think I am. <laughs> I yeah, think God exactly. really truly loves all of His creation, and it's our ego that wants retribution, wants some people to suffer, and all this. So I just want to like talk about this because I think it's so vital because. So many people that need Jesus, that really want to come to Jesus, are not coming to Jesus because of this, this separation gospel, this um, us versus them, uh, Democrat versus Republican, um, whatever, like liberal. Exactly. Oh, there's so much. And, and it's like, it's so divisive, you know, and I know. we need unity right now more than ever, more than ever. So I just want to read what um, I do It's mind boggling. Yeah. <laughs> it's mind boggling. It's like what? No, the whole gospel is about our redemption. But um, yeah. But William Barclay and uh, David Bentley Hart are really good. I'm just going to read a couple of things here. Yeah. Uh, Professor David Bentley Hart wrote, um, "In the original Greek of the New Testament, there really are only three verses that seem to threaten eternal punishment for the wicked, though in fact none of them actually does." Hart adds, the New Testament scholars, as the, as theologically diverse as Mark, Marcus Borg and N.T. Wright, have suggested that translators might do well in many or most instances to render aeonius as of the age to come. And Dr. Helen Kaiser says aeonius is a time constituting the human temporal horizon. Uh, so a more specific way of of understanding that Barclay writes, the simplest way to put it is that Ionius cannot be used properly of anyone but God. Eternal punishment is then literally the kind of redeemal punishment which it benefits God to give and which only God can give. Um, and, and there's one more paragraph that might make it even more clear because even reading that, like, well, what does that, what does that mean? Re- remedial. Remedial means yeah. re- it's like re- redemptive, re- redemptive punishment. So it, it, yeah. it has a purpose. You don't just aren't suffering forever. That makes no sense, right? Yeah. It seems abundantly clear. Peter Hyatt says this. It seems abundantly clear that an aeon is simply a noun and should be translated as age in English. Aeonius is an adjective 
And in English, there is no adjective that corresponds to the English noun age. It means of the age. But that leaves us with the question of what age? In scripture, there appears to be a, fun, a fundamental distinction between this age or these ages and the ages to come, God's age. So fundamentally, something aeonious is something of God's age. So it's God's age. It's so God is created. God has these. So <laughs> God, God is, God is eternal, right? He's forever. <laughs> so the eternalness of God which yeah. is it's forever and we are in we are in him we are birthed in him so we were created even a thought in his mind before we were actually in our mother's womb we were created and that eonious life is a, it's just telling us like in this life there's going to be suffering as jesus said you know you will you will suffer this isn't going to be like a piece of cake every moment you know you're so you will have tribulations and suffering but this is all part of that sanctification process. Does it mean he wants us to suffer? No. This is our walk. This is our journey. Eternally, the next stage, the next stage. It's not like it's like there's one thing, one moment where, you know, in the Catholic religion, you have to pay for your sins by by experiencing all this suffering and in the afterlife. And then and then you can go to heaven. It's it's yeah. not like that. It's like your yeah. whole life. Jesus has already done it. So your whole life yeah. is a redemptive life. Yeah. Right. So yeah yeah can i say say something um yeah it's a... yeah I th you know, that's beautiful what you're saying and, and and i was thinking too when you were reading some of that and also when you're talking um about it um i was just thinking about how when you really see god's heart like you see his heart as being an abba you know through jesus through the holy spirit and and you just see that his mercy endures forever you see that he is love and love never gives up love never fails um and you know it's it's funny you know be, because then you can interpret verses correctly and if you're not seeing a certain verse through that lens of god being love that and and, it, and enduring forever you know and, and what his love is like revealed in jesus then you're not reading that verse correctly but and for example, I'll take the one. It's funny because then when you actually read the verses correctly, even not even through that lens I said, but just simply even in the original language in context and just using your lot, like just your or your logic, which religion tries to make you not do. They're just like, hey, it says what it says. But no, you don't even know what it actually means. <laughs> uh, and you're not even using your logic. You're just scared and you're locked in this box of tr their interpretation. What, you know, the devil wants you to believe actually. Right. A fearful interpretation, but God's love casts out all fear. But, but what, what I was going to say is just, you know, these verses that seem to suggest an eternal conscious torment in hell actually disprove it when you really just even use your logic and look at it in the original languages, for example. Um, for example, the verse Mark, or sorry, what is it? Whatever, the sheep and the goats. Yeah. Um, yeah. And probably not marked like matthew or john or something i think it's john um I, I usually know what it is off the top of my head but but right now it's not on the top of my head <laughs> that's okay but, but it's okay i think it's, but, but, I think it's matthew but whatever but we yeah know. yeah the sheep and the goats and it, it's um and you know at, at the end of that you know they love that verse and, and it says you know uh the goats will be you know, yeah. sent into everlasting punishment and fire, right? But it doesn't even say that. It just says they'll be cast into outer darkness. Uh oh, yeah, maybe it does. No, 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 no. I think that's another one. Or is that? Yeah, I think that's another one because because uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure at the end of that parable of uh, the sheep and the goats, like he 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 talks about uh. Ever it's Matthew 25 yeah Matthew 25, Matthew 25. and it, and uh just right I'm pretty sure it's the last verse of that of that chapter it says it talks about fire being cast into everlasting fire and punishment but but when you look at the word for everlasting there 
or sometimes it gets translated forever. It, it's, it, it's aeon, and that word aeon means an age. There, there's actually another Greek word that gets translated as, I, I mean, that could get translated as forever or, or everlasting, and, it, and, it, and it's not used. It's, mm-hmm. it's not used. Um, so it doesn't mean an endless duration. It, right. It's actually, and, 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 and one thing, if you use your logic just a little bit, you know, it makes so much sense because the word for punishment there is the word classes in the Greek. And it, and it's, and it literally means uh, correcting. It means a correction. So right. when you think about it, how could there be an eternal correction? Yeah. Is someone going to get corrected forever? No, yeah. <laughs> no, no. There's a reason for, so, for correction. It's because the correction will end. Yeah. And you, you, no, sorry. Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah, there's a reason for a correction because the correction will do something. So therefore, the correction will end, and it's not forever. It, it makes no sense for correction to be forever. Yeah. So, so even that word there can can prove to you that that word must not mean everlasting. It's actually a crazy mistranslation. But anyway, even if someone was to not look at the Greek in the context about how it's not even literal people, but it's sheep and goats. He's talking about nations. He's talking about he's talking about their attitudes, mm-hmm. you know, toward people. Yep. You know, all that aside, when you just look at God's heart, it's like, okay, these verses can't mean what I think it means. And, and, and if I am gonna think it, it is that that that's a that that's like a sort a form of blasphemy in the yeah. face of God, be like, you're spitting in the face of God being like, like, you're not that good, God, you're going to do this exactly what I think this verse means. But hey, do you really know God's heart in this verse? What does this really mean? Do you know why Jesus said this? Do you really or are you just like going willy nilly and not respecting the text? Yeah. You know what I mean? Not respecting your sacred Bible. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> no, sorry, the Bible is sacred and amazing. But 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 people are putting it over the face of Jesus. Yeah, who is the word? Who is exactly? The word? And, and yeah, the Jesus needs to show us what the word really means. Right. Yeah, you and you were right. It's um twenty five verse forty one, and just for people that like word for word, it says, uh, "Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty. You gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger. You didn't invite me in. I needed clothes. You didn't clothe me. I was sick in prison and you didn't look after me. Um, and then, and then he says, and they answered, Lord, when we did see you hungry or thirsty, when did we see you this way? Needing clothes, sick in prison and did not help you. He will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did not do to the least of these, you did not do for me. So then the last verse of the chapter says, then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. So if you read it like that, it sounds like there's this separation between the righteous and the unrighteous. But as you were saying, the eternal, what does eternal mean? I still think you have to kind of understand what that means. That For me, I had to go unravel the Greek and the Aramaic. Yeah. Uh, because it does sound like that. If I was, and if I'm a child reading it, you know, yeah. like, I have ch- I have a child, and you know, I want to make sure when she comes across that passage, she's not like freaked out, you know. Because when yeah. I was growing up reading it, it, freaked me out. Like, oh, so God picks and chooses um, people because He made us. And it's sort of like, sort of like His fault. <laughs> <laughs> I used to think like that, you know, like He made yeah. us. One one thing that's coming to me to say is is. Uh... That some that some people can be like, um, you know, oh, these verses about you dying and raising with Jesus are just about believers, mm-hmm. you know. Right. And so you know they will, or sorry, when you believe, then these verses become true about you. You you know you know because I'm trying to tell them no, it's a past tense thing. You died and rose with him, and he saved the whole world. And and but if you are to interpret it that way, that they see it that oh, these verses are only true about you when you believe, then you're believing in something that's called pre or double predestination, where where God chose some for heaven, God chose some for hell. But no, it says that God chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that he intimately knew us before he formed us in our mother's womb. 
you know, and some people are like, oh, what about he never knew you? He never knew you. Well, okay, why does it say that he knew you before? So he did know you. So he must be talking about something else. He's talking about the false religious self that. Yeah, he never knew you, the false religious self, because that's exactly what that was about when he said, yeah. wait, wait, why are we in trouble? We we worshipped you. We cast out demons. We did this. We did that. We did this. We did that. And then he's like, get out of here. I never knew you. Because exactly. he doesn't know that religious part of us. He doesn't want to know. That's that's like very dead on the cross. That's like, that's our sin. That's exactly. our God. We can do it. And then people are like, oh, what's the point of him dying? Oh. If all are saved, that's why he died and it rose because he saved all. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what's the point of faith? I was like, you need faith. Oh, yes, you're right. You need faith to see that it's true. Faith sees it. Faith doesn't make it true. Uh, mm -hmm. And there's something here I want to read about punishment. It, it's a quote by, or actually Eric Wilding wrote this. I, I, I love I love him. <laughs> He's amazing. I love him too, yeah. Beautiful brother. Mm -hmm. And it says, punishment in the New Testament the word for punishment is colossus mm. and it's spelled k-o-l-a-s-i-s -S. Mm -hmm. the word was originally a gardening word and its original meaning was pruning trees mm. in the greek there are two words for punishment tamora and colossus and there is a quite definite distinction between them Aristotle defines the difference. And he says, Colossus is for the sake of the one who suffers it. I'm going to say that again. Colossus is for the sake of the one who suffers it. It's for their sake. But Tamora, the, the other word get, that gets translated as punishment in some verses, Tamora is for the sake of the one who inflicts it. Uh, Plato says that no one punishes um, Colossus simply because he has done wrong. I'm going to say it again. Yeah. Plato says that no one punishes simply because he has done wrong. That would be to take unreasonable vengeance, which is Timoratai. Uh, we punish Colesi, a wrongdoer, in order that he may not do wrong again. And then it shows you what it's from. It's from some book here uh, that he wrote, um, Plato. Yeah. Protagoras 323E. Um, and that says, Clement of Alexandria from Stomatis 424-716 says, or no, sorry, he, <laughs> he defines Colossus as peer discipline and Tamora as to return evil for evil. And I want to say that it says that God says overcome evil with good mm -hmm. you know so and and he doesn't demand he, like he, he doesn't tell us to do something and then he just goes and returns evil for evil no forgive your enemies and forgive those exactly that you. exactly when you were nailing him to the cross he was forgiving them exactly yeah and then and then it said amen and this is it says um uh alice uh, it's A U L U S, Jellius. <laughs> it's some name. Uh, says that Colossus is given that a man may be corrected. Mm. Tamora is given that dignity and authority may be vindicated. Mm. I'm gonna say that again. Colossus, which it is given that a man may be corrected. Tim, and, and, and that's the verse. Sorry, sorry. Colossus is what's used in that Matthew 24 passage we're just talking about. And it says, Tamora is, is given that dignity and authority may be vindicated. And that's from the Attic Nights, um, 714. But okay. it says the, the difference is quite clear in Greek. And it is always observed. Tamora is retributive punishment. Hmm. Colossus is always given to amend and to cure. Uh, William Barclay from the Apostle Creed. Um, wow. Uh, Tim, Timoria, vengeful punishment is used twice. Acts 22.5 and, and Acts 26.11. Both of these are Paul's account of how he used to 
persecute Christians or used how he used to. Yeah. God is not like Saul, the Pharisees and the priests. Colossus, the divine corrective punishment is the judgment of Matthew 25, 46, first John 4, 17 to 18. There is a corrective punishment in the age Aeonia to come. Some have already been perfected in love and had all fear cast out. Mm. They abide in love and in life in God. However, the judgment crisis decision is for those who have lives, or sorry, is for those who have, yeah, (laughs) have lives in the flesh and not yet accepted this love and life. Mm. Yeah. They will be corrected and perfected by God's love and life in Christ by the Spirit. The plan of Abba, Jesus, and Holy Spirit is the restoration of all things to mm. live in their perfect love. Wow. What a um, good prayer. Eh? That's how we should pray for people, right? Amen. And I want to... Uh, for... Can I read something? Yeah. Uh, hey, thank you. Uh, I was thinking maybe we can do another... If, if you ever wanted to do another uh, video. Yeah, I love together this. Together with me, then we could talk a bit more. Like... Like the Hitlers or or Vladimir Putin right yeah. now in this day and age, you know, people yeah. are are praying that he gets swallowed up by a whale or something. You know, people are praying like something bad will happen to him. I pray for his redemption. I pray that he sees Christ and you know that Christ he he changes now. You know, <laughs> not amen. Not wait, <laughs> yeah, all things are possible. We yeah. we hope for everyone. Yeah, hope for everyone. Um. He basically said that blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is, um, and, and I don't disagree with him, but I said something even deeper, which, which I hope helped him. But, but, but he said that blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is like when you are, you know, saying something uh, is not God when it is, you know, like, like say like, the, like, you know, the Holy Spirit moving on someone and someone's like, no, that's a demon, you know? Yeah. Uh, anyway, I I said, I said, that's awesome, bro. I believe the blasphemy of Holy spirit is is when someone is not moving out of the, or sorry, when, 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 when they're not moving out of the one sin that God does not forgive, which is, I believe the sin that is summed up nicely in this quote by good old George McDonald. And then, and then, and then I read a bunch more and then I eventually put the quote, but, but I said, Sure, it could be what you're saying it is. The blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is what he's saying it is. I'm saying it, it, it probably could be. And I'm not doubting that. It actually probably is. I'm not even disagreeing. If if it is what you're saying it is, then that would really be the fruit of this deeper sin that God does not forgive, release, give rib- uh, liberation to, because he can't. This, and, and I'm going to explain why. This deeper root of sin is, I believe, a a resistance of God, Holy Spirit, who shows us what is what. And what he shows us is that we are forgiven, liberated, made whole. And then I quote verses, and it says, God was in Christ when he reconciled the world unto himself, not counting their sins against them, past tense. Mm -hmm. By his stripes you have been healed or saved, past tense. While we were still dead in sin. He raised us together with Christ when he raised him from the dead. By grace, you have been healed, saved, past tense. If one died for all, then all have died, past tense. God is love. Love keeps no record of wrongs, etc. And, and then I said, when we resist that past tense revelation, um, it is not God who is resisting us. It is us who are denying what is already true about us. Mm-hmm. And therefore, we are not subjectively experiencing the liberation that is already objectively ours. He can't liberate us, um, which is what the Greek word aphesis means that gets translated into forgiveness in many translations. It means liberation re- re- and release. It's the same Greek word that gets used in the Bible when talking of being released from someone in a divorce. Mm -hmm. He can't liberate, release us from our bondage 
our blindness, etc., if we are resisting his revealings in us. Right. So, of course, we won't be liberated. We were so in the dark, not able to see the light, to even turn to the light, that Jesus had to become man to vicariously save the world by shining his light of our Papa's love for us in our darkness. And he saw it in our human place. Mm -hmm. He saw that light in our human place. Healing all. That healed all. For Holy Spirit to now open our eyes to this reality of Abba Jesus and Holy Spirit's presence. Of other-centered, unconditional, self-giving love already within us. Already having healed us. So that we can experience this eternal, outside of time and space reality of being in him before the foundation of the world. He wow. intimately knew us all before he created us in Christ, in our mother's wombs. And then here's some verses. Um, in the day of the resurrection, you will know that I am in my father, you are in me, and I am in you. It pleased God to reveal his son in me. Uh, and that, and that's two, that's two verses, by the way. Um, one was Paul talking and one was Jesus talking. And okay. It, it is Holy Spirit who shows us Jesus. And when we see Jesus, we see ourselves as in a mirror. For we are created in his image as beloved children of Papa, created in the Trinity. Yes, not all are experiencing that right now. And so that's why we preach. And, and yeah. Yes, not all are experiencing that right now. And so that's why we preach the good news that they are reconciled. Mm, wow. So that they can be reconciled, which in the word be means to exist as. Yeah. Because we are. Um, reconciled. And, and, then, and then I said, I'm not trying to correct you because I don't even think you're wrong. I just love talking about things because it can show us just how amazing God is. And in the deeper inner workings of man, I said, I'm a wisdom of God addict. <laughs> ha ha ha. I agree with basically everything you say. I love the living message you carry and your theology that moves together with him. I love you tons, brother, legit. And yeah, here, here is the quotes uh, by George MacDonald. Here's one. And it says, I believe that no man is ever condemned for any sin except one that he will not leave his sins and come out of them <laughs> and be the child of him who is his father. And here's another quote. It's a little longer, but it's, it's not too much longer than, than the thing I read that I wrote. Um, All manner of sin and blasphemy, the Lord said, shall be forgiven unto men. Um, but the blasphemy against the spirit shall not be forgiven. And I and, and I just want to add, it says, because some people are like, look, they're never going to be forgiven. But but it does say that it's only for the age and the age to come. It doesn't say that it's forever. Mm -hmm. So it's just for the next in the next age. It's just because that's probably how long it's going to take people to wake up. Yeah. Like, like Pharaoh and his hardened heart. You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, that you can harden your heart. Yeah, we exactly. Ourselves. Right. Yeah. Go ahead. Keep reading. No, 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 no. It's fine. <laughs> I, I, I'm just looking here. I was like, I got to read this. Um, yeah. So all manner of sin and blasphemy, the Lord said, shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the spirit shall not be forgiven. God speaks, as it were, in this manner. I forgive you everything. Not a word more shall be said about your sins. Only come out of them. Come out of the darkness of your exile. Come into the light of your home, your birthright, and do evil no more. Love your neighbor as I love you. Be my good child. Trust in your father. I am light. Come to me, and you shall see things as I see them, and hate the evil thing. I will make you love the thing which you now call good, and love not. Um, and his child should say, sorry, and, and if his child should say, I prefer staying in the darkness, forgive me that too. 
The Lord will reply, no, that cannot be. The one thing that cannot be forgiven is the sin of choosing to be evil, of refusing deliverance or liberation, like I said. He who chooses to go on sinning annihilates my forgiveness. If a man refuses to come out of his sin, he must suffer the vengeance of a love that would be no love if it left him there. That's so deep. Yeah. Shall I allow my creature to be the thing my soul hates? There is no excuse for this refusal. God passes by and forgets a thousand sins, forgiving them. Only we must begin to be good. To do evil no more. He who refuses must be punished until he gives way. Yeah. He who refuses must be punished until he gives way or must be corrected, mm-hmm. gives way, repents, and come to the light that his deeds may be seen by himself to be what they are and by himself reproved. Who knows? Sorry. Who knows but such sin may need for its cure the continuous punishment but of an aeon. That's George MacDonald. Yeah. The un- yeah, the consuming fire. He wrote he wrote unspoken ser- sermons, right? Yeah. Good stuff. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Sure where that came from. All right, let's let's pray. Oh, this is so good. Thank me. you so much. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you're, you're, you're so real, that you're a real person who has a real emotions, has a real personality. You're actually a real person that we can get to know. <laughs> and I thank you, Lord, that you wired our very being to know you in the mm-hmm. ways that you want us to know you. And with our Father, Abba, and Holy Spirit, and I just ask today, Lord, and I Actually, I, yeah, I thank you for all the people that watch, watch this, Lord. I, I, and I just ask that you would bless them more and more with that revelation of, of you and them and them and you. And it's just, just like it says, in that day of the resurrection, which already happened, that they already rose in, that they will know that you are in your father, your father is in you, and, and, and we're in you. And, and we're all in one another, in oneness but with mm-hmm. distinction because we're because we're not god god's not us father son holy spirit are not each other you know they are them so, so thank, you, jesus. <laughs> thank you jesus and i i just ask that you would just be you just set them all free and sh- and, and just show them that knowing just just give them because they already know and, and many people watching this will know and just whatever i just say that whatever healing they need lord whatever healing they need i just i just command it to manifest now i just i just command healing in the eyes Right now, in Jesus' name, I just thank you, Lord, for for mental illnesses breaking off people, yes. uh, demons leaving people's minds. If there if there's any demons that need to leave, Lord, just I just command them out right now and by fire in the name of Jesus, yes. get out of them now, and never return. I just I just thank you, Lord, that it, that the work is finished and that you're just going to manifest that through through them. And I just see fire touching a lot of people, Lord. Thank you. Baptize them in Holy Ghost and fire. And, and just show them how loved they are. And <laughs> they, they shall know the truth and the truth shall set them free. Jesus, amen. Yeah. So be it, Lord. And, and just bless this whole video. I thank you. It's already blessed, Lord. You're just so amazing. <laughs> we, we, we bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Father. We bless you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for this. Thank you for Anissa and her family. Bless them all, Lord. And my family and all the families of the people who listen to this. In, 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 in your mighty name, nature, and heartbeat, I pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah, that was whack. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you so much, Matt. Thanks You're for welcome. coming. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, so. I think, I think that's a good idea, too. So something I'm thinking about just, you know, differentiating between what's religion and, and what's what is our true self 
Yeah. And, and, and how they fit together because, okay. because religion tries to m- manipulate our real self. Yeah. It's like this framework that manipulates our real self when, when the gospel just lets you be your real self and there's no Liberty. manipulation. There's you, 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 you're just free yeah. to be you. Yeah. That's right. Your loving self. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like religion hijacks it and just, anyway, we shouldn't anyway. get into that because we can talk for another two and a half hours. About yeah. That. <laughs> yeah. It says God is our Papa. Uh, and I just had that idea to make that hat and you know, I, want, I wanted to bless people. And, and I know a lot of people, like that so you know i want to sell it just to, for people and i'm basically charging like the same price that i would pay like for them and you know i, I designed it I, I designed it and a brother's making them for me and i'm basically charging i think like like you know the, the same amount and uh but like three dollars more or something just and, and then all the proceeds are going to go to um my Homeless ministry, like I want to go out on the street and 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 bless people on, on the street. I want to go, and, you know, just just give homeless people food, give homeless people clothes, and yeah. you know, you know, that's what I used to do, and and I do it here and there. But I want to go back out and do it more because it's getting cold. It's starting to get colder out here in Canada. I want to go bless them, and and so all the proceeds, you know, some people are giving me extra extra money on through PayPal. I got a PayPal, you know, because I want to go out and bless people, but. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, Thank you. Just one yeah. sec. I, I'll, I'll go get the hat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll just. Here's the hat. <laughs> yes. God is our papa. I love it. And the back. Joy. Yay. It looks. I, oh, it's really good quality. Like, look at that. I definitely, I definitely want to buy some and, like super, and really, really good quality, them. really stitched really well. And yeah, stitched. It's really thick. And, and, and I love the font. I chose, like I chose a really good font. It's like yeah. really unique. I love it. Awesome. I but love I'm, it. Not, I'm not doing it for money, you know? Yeah. Well, I know. Yeah. I'm not doing it for money that, at all. And, and, and with, with the Kano Joy, that, that, that matches up with the Kano's Joy ministry too. So it, I would love to bless people around our town here as well. So yeah. getting yeah. cold here in Connecticut. In Connecticut, Connecticut. There, I mean, I mean, I guess it's kind of a bit pricey. I, I mean, it's kind of like you probably would buy a store, like in a store. I think this hat would probably be a burn that much, you know, stitch and everything. It's like 40 bucks mm. American. And if you want me to order, it's 15. I'm going to do a flat rate shipping of 15. So, I mean, it's going to a good cause, you know, so. Yeah. If anyone... And um, it's only about roughly three to six dollars. I'll be getting extra. So every hat I can buy, probably a homeless person a meal. And, and, and but I want I want to give these hats out because look at this. It's like evangelizing. Yeah. <laughs> it's and like it, God is our our Papa, not just my yeah. or the religious people. It's it's like you, you go on. Everyone sees it. It's like because that's the truth of the gospel. God God is the Papa or the Father of all, over all, in all, and through all. Yeah, that's such a blessing. Oh, it's so exciting. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah. And we're going, I, I don't know if you know, but um, I do feel blessed right now to share with you that um, Papa did bless me with some finances uh, from my, my new job. And yeah. um, I will be able to afford to go to the Kano Center. I don't know what it is, but like to see Francois de Toy at uh, yeah. Indiana. So I'm super, super excited. That's so beautiful. I'll be, I'll be seeing him and John and Matt and whoever else shows up. I hope I can come. I'm, I'm just so excited because I love his wife. I love Francois's wife. She's a children's book writer and illustrator, which is which is what I do as well, which I love. That's like my hobby is writing children's books. Um, 